Good morning. How's everybody today? Pretty good, huh? It's a big day. It's, it's not often where you have, ad, this is Advent 4 this morning, and then this, later on at 6 o'clock we celebrate Christmas Eve. So it's a busy, busy day in the church, to be sure. And busy in the community as people are watching the lions intently at 1 o'clock to see if they can uh, do something special. Uh, my name is Mark Fisher. I'm pastor here at St. John, and I welcome you to uh, our sound system and uh, all that it brings, because you never know. But we're working on it, and uh, good, good sound crew, truly, truly. Um, I want to welcome those who are on uh, Facebook Live and Zoom as well as we celebrate this, the final Sunday of the church year. Um, a few announcements to make. Of course, we have our uh, Christmas Eve service uh, this, this evening at 6. And uh, no coffee hour today, but next week we'll do a coffee hour and bring whatever's left over from your Christmas holiday goodies, and we'll just see what happens, and we'll just do what we do. So uh, please, uh, please uh, be, come and do that. Um, we don't have Bible study this uh, week. I do want to note, though, that starting the following week, we're going to do two weeks on Ruth, book of Ruth and then we're going to shift to the book of Esther for a couple weeks so we're going to do something a little bit different that's Thursday at 10 30 um, and it's, it's it's good fun good fun we also oh yeah and then this week still at uh, on Wednesday night at 6 we have a when, last Wednesday of the month gathering uh, more of a it's more of social but we also talk about uh, uh, Matters of Faith as well in our MPR at 6 o'clock. So it's something where you bring something uh, to eat or drink and come and fellowship and eat. And then we'll have uh, some sort of a faith-based question that we'll talk about together. And the conversations are always really, really good. And nobody, you know, we have to usually just break things off. So, uh, but it is a good time. So if you haven't been there, Please feel free to come. I know it's a busy week, but we'll just keep it, keep it busy for you. Other than that, I want to, um, I also want to uh, celebrate the fact that Joanne Percy uh, is here with us today to sing. There you are, Joanne, finishing up some work in Chicago and here to be able to be with us. Uh, she is part of our St. John family and we're always excited when she comes home to share her wonderful voice with us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Are there any other uh, notices that I have missed? Okay, it looks like there are not. So we will move on to the lighting of the Advent wreath. Praise to you, O oh God, who lives with us, sharing our flesh and bones. As Mary waited and Joseph dreamed, so we dream and wait for you. Bless us and let your face shine upon us, most radiant than all these candles and more dear than all else we seek. Restore us when we fail to refuse the evil and choose the good and banish all our fears. We pray. In the name of Emmanuel, your promised child and our Savior. Amen. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sins. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear of greed and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with the creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways. For the sake of an awaiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your son's sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon all of us. seated. And we have the children's message now. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, you'll find out. So many things. How is everyone? Good, awesome. I'm doing good too, yeah. Well, have any of you guys tried something new recently? What'd you do? What's that, crocheting? What? Dressing up the cat, oh. Oh boy, what did you try? Oh. Uh, a uh, handstand and a cartwheel. Wow. Did you guys try anything new recently? You got bat wheels? Oh, cool. Well, I tried something new too. See this? It is called an inkle loop. 
Well, that's a good question. When I bought it, I had no idea. I knew it was a loom. I looked at it, I was like, I think that's a loom. And I like doing stuff. So I was like, I'll figure it out. It had some instructions. I got it a few years ago. I was afraid of it. It looked scary. I mean, it's not, weaving isn't like, you know, big scary, but it was a little scary because I didn't know what to do. So I did not touch it for a long time. And I finally, I was like, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure it out. So new things can be scary, can't they? Why do I got that? Well, because I wanted to try it out. I wanted to play with it. I wanted to learn it. I wanted to do something new, even though it was scary. So today we hear about uh, someone who was asked to try something new, something big and scary, something very hard, because sometimes new things are hard. This was a very hard thing. We're going to hear about a lady named Mary. Any idea who she is? Yeah. Jesus' mother? Yeah, Jesus' mother. Oh, like a doctor. Uh, she was the real thing. She was the mother. She gave birth to him. What's that? I did not hear you. All right, so <laughs> she was Jesus' mother. And you know what? That's a big and scary thing, isn't it? And a pretty hard thing. But she did it. And we got Jesus, and Jesus taught us that we should care for each other and help each other. And caring for each other and helping each other, those can be scary things too, right? And hard. It is hard. Sometimes it's easy and fun, but sometimes you might have to do things that are unpleasant. And like I one time went downtown and I picked up other people's garbage. That was a little, exactly. Ugh. It did help the community. So we can do good things when we try new things. And it is gross. It's gross to pick up other people's garbage, but you know what? Someone's gotta do it. So it's good to practice, right? So sometimes we practice doing new things on smaller scales, like my little loom here. And that helped me learn. That helped me learn that I could do things. So I made this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I used my loom. Thank you. And I made this, and it told me I can do something that I'm scared of. It told me that I can figure it out, I can try something hard, and I can accomplish. So you can do the scary, the bigger scary things too, right? Like picking up the garbage and caring for people. <laughs> Exactly. The, the unpleasant, scary, big things, new things. We can, we can practice little ones so we're better and ready for the big ones. All right. Let's pray. God, thank you for helping us try new things, giving us the courage to step out of our comfort zone so that we can do a good job of caring and loving the world like you've taught us. Amen. You are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from the book of 2 Samuel, 
beginning at the seventh chapter. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I've cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the time that I anointed judges over my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before you, and your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. We'll now read responsively the Psalm, Luke 1. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. promise made to our forebearers, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, 
of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of a greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has been said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. The angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Nothing is impossible. Now, Gabriel asked Mary to do something that seems to be pretty impossible. But yet, Gabriel understood that she would be able to do what needed to be done. She had the ability to do it. She was yoked to God in a way that would give her the strength to become the mother of the Most High Jesus. Now, of course, Mary listens to this. She is aware she's a Pharisee by her own faith experience, and Pharisees at that time did believe in a Messiah coming back. And so when she hears these words, she is stirred. And she is hopeful. She is challenged, but she says, yes, here I am. Here I am. And now, over the next 30 or so years, she raises Jesus and her other children and helps support his ministry in a variety of ways. She's usually in the background, but she's there. She's always there. And she certainly was there at the end of Jesus' life. And after the death and resurrection of Jesus, Mary continues to stay in Jerusalem and help work to um, organize the next round of the church. She's part of that whole process. She lived out her life of faith. She said, yes, here I am. And today, I think it's fair to say if we look at the Old Testament or the New Testament, most scholars would agree, and maybe we would agree too, that when you look at all the characters in the New Testament, Mary is the second most significant. Jesus, then Mary, then, then you've got to put Peter and Paul in there. But Mary plays such a critical role. Even though we don't hear a lot from her, I think we see the fruits of her ministry in some way through her son, and the church that would follow. Now, we still live in New Testament times, do we not? Jesus has been born, he's been risen, he has helped spark uh, faith over the ages. We are part of that community of believers that are invited to listen to the words of Jesus just as Mary did and to take those next steps in our life of faith. So I invite you to think of yourself as Mary today. Um, you know, and it, it really shouldn't be that hard to imagine because really you're more like her than you may realize. You are a child of God. Whether you're male or female, young or old, 
you are part of the team. You are part of the whole experience of taking the peace out into the world and sharing it every day in a variety of different ways. You have that license to do it and you have the encouragement to do it. And so it's an opportunity for each of us to look at how we can live our lives in a world that doesn't necessarily organize itself along these lines. It's not easy. Now, you are not asked today to give birth to a baby named Jesus, but what you are asked to, to do today and, re, and to remind you to do is to give birth to the teachings of Jesus in your life. You are the church and you are living now in this new testament time you have the ability to become the hands and feet of god and that's a powerful thing it's a powerful thing and so you like mary have this opportunity from this day forward to just move out in time and space and to share. You know, uh, that's the opportunity we have. And like Mary responded, yes, you might respond, here I am, Lord, it is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. heart. That's part of the hold an evening prayer that we celebrated every Wednesday. So just a little refrain from that. But uh, um, I, and I apologize, but God called me to do that. I said, Mark, sing a little. So I did. Um, but where is God calling you right now? That becomes the question. Just like Mary was called to, to do something very significant, what is God calling you to do today? Maybe, maybe God is calling you to forgive someone. Someone in your life who is a challenge, who maybe has hurt you or let you down. God. Is God calling you to forgive that person? Maybe God's calling you to forgive yourself. We try to do good things, we make mistakes, we stumble, we fall, and life is the way it is. And sometimes we do things we regret, and we try to make the most out of making things better, but sometimes we need to forgive ourselves recognizing that God has already forgiven us. Maybe God is calling you, maybe, to stop judging other people. Just stop it. To give birth to that life that frustrates you. To recognize that that life is loved by God. To understand we don't always understand what we think we see. There's more to the story. There's always more to the story. And all of us know that because we've had experiences with that. Where we thought this person was whatever and then we get to know them and it's different. So maybe God's calling you to stop judging others and rather be kind or even more kind to give the benefit of the doubt, which was kind of the, the big game plan of the first century church, giving each other the benefit of the doubt. You have all kinds of different people with different skill sets and backgrounds trying to become community. So giving the benefit of the doubt was really strong in the atmospherics of the first couple centuries of the church, along with a lot of arguments to be sure. Maybe, maybe God's calling you to not turn away from human suffering. Maybe God's saying is, don't put your head in the sand, 
Don't listen to voices that try to poo-poo the fact that there are people who are hurting. Push that away and to listen carefully to the cry of the lost, the hurting, the oppressed. To become tuned into that and to go closer and closer to understand the, what human suffering is, what it's about, and then to ask yourself, after you become fully aware, the question, what should I do, Lord? Do not be afraid, my friends, of following the voice of Jesus. Don't be afraid. There are so many voices that we get to hear in this world, and we don't always hear the voice of Jesus. But the voice of Jesus, that still small voice, is in us. And if we attune ourselves to the shalom, if we embed ourselves in it, our discernment becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. But it takes effort, and it does take work, and it does take a desire that, yes, here I am, Lord. It is I. I choose to be your hands and feet. And so, my friends, as we are in this season of light, moving on to Christmas Eve in just a few hours, we can celebrate the fact that we are part of God's creation, that all people are part of God's creation, and we can become liberated from all of the gunk and all of the stuff that keeps us from becoming truly free to give and receive love. Amen. rise as you are able. As we recite the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This morning. Praises are prayer, prayer requests. I'd like to pray for everyone who is traveling over this holiday season for safe travel and a joyous return to their home and their families. Please pray for COVID victims in this uh, Christmas season. I'm sure we know a few that are out there, and what a sad thing for all of them to have COVID during the Christmas season. Say a prayer for all, please. I want to give praise for my dear friend, Fran Kopp, who is able to join us for service today. Thank you so much. God bless you all. It's good to have you, Fran. And, and prayers for all those who are working this holiday season and working this weekend and working through the Christmas period to keep things that we call essential um, normal. Right. Are there praises or prayer requests? There are not. With the hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. You promised mercy to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever. Bring your church into thoughtful, caring, and collaborative relationships with those of other faiths. Strengthen our shared values that we work together in caring for our world. Merciful God. As fields and crops lie dormant, bless them with the holy rest. Prepare them to thrive that they may provide abundant food in due season. Protect animals who hibernate and provide for all who scavenge for food in this lean season. Merciful God, you rise up the lowly and cast down the arrogant. Teach humility to all in positions of authority. Break down systems of oppression, especially systems that perpetuate inequity and exclusion. Do not allow wealth, power, or pride to become idols that obscure your call to justice. Merciful God, Look with favor upon all who cry out to you. Accompany with tenderness all who are afraid or ill, especially those on the prayer chain and those that were mentioned today. 
Rescue all who experience abuse or who live under the threat of violence, especially refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers in search of a safe and stable home. Merciful God. You are pleased to make your home among us. Make our homecomings joyful as we gather with friends, family, and chosen families in celebration. Grant safety to all who travel. Sustain the work of Lutheran immigration and refugee services and other ministries that assist in setting up new homes. Merciful God. Listen to these and all of our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please uh, rise as you are able. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless, and bless these gifts of our, your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. And so with the choirs on angels, with the, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples in an upper room in downtown Jerusalem to say goodbye. And he said goodbye with the meal. And at the beginning of the meal, Jesus took bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And when the meal was completed, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. And remember me. We know that with the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are strengthened to become his hands and feet, to share his love and receive his love in a world that desperately needs it. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come and take your place at the table and know that all people are welcome to this meal. Amen. You may be seated. To our friends on Facebook Live and Zoom, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is is the blood of Christ shed for you. shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped and shall
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth as Christ our Savior. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. We are called by Christ. Go in peace. Keep awake.